hello hello this is christy lawrence here with time to profit if you are new around here and you don't know what we're all about i help business owners and salespeople grow their client base by helping them create impactful and rewarding sales strategies so that they can work with clients that they love and hit their revenue and profit goals and continue to grow so i'm super excited to be here i hope you are having an awesome start to the week and I could not be more excited to dive into this topic. We are talking about, are you ready for it? How to address objections in sales conversation. We are gonna dive more into this in the coming weeks because it is really, really important. And it's a place where I see a lot of people get stuck unnecessarily and make it more complicated and challenging than it needs to be. So here's the thing. The most important thing that what we're gonna talk about today is a, why I never talk about overcoming objections in my sales training. Um, and the reason for that is I hate this idea of overcoming an objection. Like it's something to be pushed against and overcome. And I just don't feel like that's true. What I have found to be true is that objections are something that should be met and addressed, not overcome. And so that is really going to just frame the conversations we're having for the next few weeks around how do you address objections in an impactful way for both you and your prospects. But before we even get into that, this is probably the most important part of it and the biggest mistake that I see people make when they hear objections or what they think are objections, and that is confusing questions with objections. So let me tell you more, okay? So oftentimes we're in a sales conversation and the person we're talking to asks us a question. They might ask us, how much does this cost? Do you have an office here locally? Do you make commission from this sale? Do you have experience doing this? Have you helped businesses like mine before? And because maybe we're a little bit nervous or we're unsure and we want to make sure we win the sale, we hear those questions as objections, but they're not objections. They're questions. Now, oftentimes too, we've heard objections may be related to these questions, right? We've heard people say things like, I want to work with somebody local. That's too expensive. It's not in my budget. Uh, I need to hire somebody who has more experience, right? And so because we've heard those things before and we're on the kind of lookout for them, if you will, that it's easy to hear a question as an objection when it's simply a question. So what I want you to do for the next week is anytime you are having a conversation, whether it's a conversation, initial conversation with somebody that you might want to do business with, whether you're delivering a proposal, I want you to really listen to what your prospects are saying. And I want you to start to notice, are they asking questions or do they have objections? Because there is a huge difference in how you want to address questions versus how you want to address objections. So really thinking about a question is simply a request for information. An objection is a stated concern or an expression of opposition. So oftentimes, if we are hearing a question as an objection, we will unintentionally add doubt into the sales conversation where none existed before. And this is what I want to help you avoid because questions are a good sign. It means that they're curious, that they're engaged, that they want to learn more. We want our customers to ask questions. But when we hear those questions as objections, we shut down the conversation inadvertently. We put doubt in and we tend to get defensive when we don't necessarily need to be. So what I want you to do is really listen for those questions and start thinking about what are the common questions that your clients ask you or your prospects ask you, right? What are the questions that they hear that they want to have more information about before they do business with you? and really start to pay attention to are these questions or are they objections so questions come in the form of a question their request for more information versus an objection which is a stated expression of opposition right so really hear that difference it might sound like a nuance but it is critically critically important about how you're going to move forward and how you're going to address questions and objections for your clients. So that is the very first step that I want you to do is really start to pay attention between the difference between a question and an objection. And then when somebody asks you a question, right? How much does this cost? 
Do you have an office here locally? How long have you been doing this? I want you to tell them straight. Give them a straight answer. Answer the question. That's all you have to do. They're asking you for more information. Answer the question, right? So say they say, do you have an office here locally? No, we don't. Do you mind if I might ask why you're asking about that or curious about that? So that's the second thing you'll notice I'll do. You're gonna say it straight and simply. Answer the question as straightforward and simply as possible. I'm gonna tell you why. And then I want you to ask a clarifying question so that you can discern, is this an objection or is this simply a request for information? So before you go into trying to over explain yourself, that's what people do when they hear a question as an objection, there's a tendency to over explain the answer to the question. And what that does is it puts your prospects on the defensive. If I have a question that I want answered, my brain wants the answer for that. And it's not gonna hear anything until I get that question answered. So when you just answer the question simply and straight, you actually lower the filters and build trust with your prospects and allow them to hear what you have to say next. But if you try to overcome an objection that hasn't been expressed when they're asking a question, they're not gonna hear anything you're saying anyways. And they're gonna to start to get defensive and you're gonna erode trust. So when someone asks you a question, even if it feels like a charged question or you think there's an objection behind it, answer it straight, right? So another great example, is this the best price you can do? Yes, this is our best price. And it's gonna feel uncomfortable because we wanna explain it. And so that's why we ask, there's two reasons we ask the clarifying question. One, to discern if there's more information they want or if there's an objection behind it, but also to help us with that need to just be like, I answered a question, now I need to say more, right? So it's a little bit like if I go to Target and I'm asking the cashier, where's the food on aisle, or where's XYZ, and they tell me aisle eight, they've answered my question. I'm good, but we wanna continue the conversation. So that's where that clarifying question is gonna help. So say for example, they say, how much does this cost? You know, typically my price range varies depending on the scope of the client work I do. And it starts anywhere from $2,500 a month to $5,000 a month. Do you have a specific budget in mind that you're looking to hit? Does that work within your budget? Have you put together a budget for this, right? So there's lots of different clarifying questions I can ask related to that question, but first I wanna answer the question. So I wanna hear from you, share what the questions are that you get from your prospects and sales conversations in the comments below. Share those questions um, in the comments below. If you haven't already, make sure you go to mytimetoprofit.com and download five questions that you can ask to multiply your sales. It's a great resource guide with questions for lots of different scenarios within the sales process that will help you to really have rewarding conversations with your prospects. Again, that's mytimetoprofit.com. I will see you next week and remember to believe in you.